scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Aside from the initial creation story of Adam and Eve as recorded in Genesis chapter 1, at any point in human history, you will always find three groups of people. You will find fathers, you will find young people, and you will find children. At every given point in any society, aside from the initial creation as recorded in Scripture, 1 John chapter 2, 12 to 14, Apostle John had something profound to speak to these three groups of people. 1 John 12, 2, 12 to 14. Will I have it projected here? Okay, let me just turn. Okay, beautiful. Verse 12, 12 to 14. 1 John 2, 12 to 14. Not sure my media people, please help me with beautiful. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Next verse. He now says, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Then he says, I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Final verse. Then he now says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Lamentations 3.27 I just want to inspire you. It's a brief charge and then we pray. Lamentation chapter 3 and verse 27. And I want every young person who loves Jesus to shout this scripture if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, read. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. One more time. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 and 2. Remember now thy creator, he says, in the days of your youth. In fact, can you give us NLT, this scripture? Can we find NLT? Let's read 1 and 2 of NLT. If, if, if that is not there, no problem. We'll just walk with Oh, beautiful. Now, go ahead and read it. All the youth, one and two. Ready? One to go. Uh-huh. Verse two. Help us, O oh God, by your word. 
give us grace give us wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ now what we call lifetime what we call lifetime is the summation of the period from the point a man is born until the point he transits in glory are we together now so a measure of the time frame allotted unto you from the time you are born until the time you transit in glory is known as your lifetime and the bible fragments a man's lifetime into four seasons i want you to please listen there are four seasons in a man's life the first season in any man's life is called the morning season the second season is called the afternoon season the third season is called the evening season and the final season is called night hallelujah and these seasons are fragmented into 25 year circles so the first 25 years of a man's life ready or not is called your morning season the second 25 years of your life is called your afternoon season the third 25 years of your life is called your evening season and every other thing after that time is called night are we together now according to god's expectation a man's lifetime should be maximized by knowing what these seasons represent and how to maximize them for instance in the morning season of a man's life god's intent is that within the first 25 years of your life under normal circumstances you should have found jesus you should have found purpose are we together now yes you should already be on a course for a glorious destiny it is also called the learning stage of life that is the stage of life that you can make mistakes and life will forgive you when the sun begins to rise it is the morning stage you say good morning you do not say good night in the morning the sun may not be shining in its strength as much as we know and yet you are still patient because you know there is something called afternoon it is unfair to expect the light to shine brightest in the morning so you give it room are we together now but once it gets to 12 noon you no longer say good morning because the time would have changed you say good afternoon and there are expectations that come with the afternoon the sun the sun shines brightest in the afternoon you can dry your clothes and in minutes they are dried because of the advantage of illumination are we together now yes it is the high point of your energy if you waste your afternoon chances are excellent that your entire day has been wasted are we together uh, you seldom find people sleeping in the afternoon it's a time of high energy activity the most productive period of any man's life that's where serious meetings happen are we together now yeah the afternoon and then as though the afternoon will never end three four five and something begins to happen the strength of the sun seem to diminish with respect to our perception here are we together now and it looks like darkness is gradually overshadowing light it is called evening at that point people return back from their places of work and they begin to consolidate on their day and when it gets to 6 7 8 p.m we still say good evening but what we mean is good night hallelujah yes and this is a replica of the seasons of a man's life as much as we do not want to hear it the thing about time is that it never goes backward time does not have the ability to go back no restoration is God taking what you missed forward not you going backward are we together you'll never go to 2022 again 
you will never go into 2021 again in as much as we know. The realm of the spirit affords you the advantage to move forward and backward, but within the frame of time, no. Once you go forward, do you know what that means? That means the moment you take that step, you are closer today to your afternoon than you were yesterday. You are closer today to your evening than you were yesterday. You are closer for some to your night than you were yesterday. Every day and every second takes you closer. And these seasons were designed to open by default. It does not matter whether you maximize them or not. The celebration of birthdays is not the celebration of longevity of life. Is a celebration of the investment that is made in your days. So when you celebrate your birthday, you are not counting years. It should be a time of thoughtfulness and contemplation that as seasons change in my life, what meaning, what, what am I adding to this time? It says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Now, the next thing I want you to learn, I hope God is speaking to us, is that time, listen carefully, is a means to measure destiny. Destiny is measured as a function of time. Destiny. So when I say you are 20 years old, the meaning of that is that you have spent this long out of the time left. Not just that this is what you your age i am telling you that if you are 20 years old what you have left is x years minus 20. most times we don't see it that way we just see that i am plus one you are right but you are wrong are we together now oh yes when it has to do with the subject of destiny you can be right and wrong at the same time plus one may be right for you as you celebrate your birthday but from the lens of destiny you are wrong no you add that plus one and subtract it from the time you have left so you are 25 what you are celebrating is not 25 years what you are celebrating is x minus 25 years left that means whatever you give your time to you are given a portion of your life to. Are we together now? If whether you are aware of it or not, anything you give your time to, you are making a statement to destiny that I find this so valuable, I can give a part of my life to it. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19, Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. God is speaking to someone. He says today, let's go back to KJV. Well, let me just walk with what we have here for time. Today I have given you the choice. Okay, I call heaven, KJV says, and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you by giving you the gift of a lifetime. I set before you Life, I set before you. Death, I set before you. Blessing, I set before you. Cursing. Therefore, I can't force you, but I can advise you. It says choose life. And that in choosing life, the implication goes beyond you. That you and your seed may live. Are we together? In Joshua chapter 24, I believe, 13 and 15, that will be the last scripture. And then I will now plead that you lend me your attention as I just establish something that I believe is very cardinal to this meeting. Joshua 24, 13. It says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor, the final charge of Joshua to the people before his departure. And cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them, of the vineyards, olive yards, which ye planted not, do ye eat? Reading to 13. Now therefore, he says, 
fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other sides of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord read with me verse 15 be patient as you read ready and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell hallelujah but as for me this is not a general statement now but as for me as for me Joshua Selman and my house I don't know about your house I don't know about your destiny but as for me and then my house we will serve the Lord say it we will serve the Lord one more time say we as for me and my house now listen decisions decide the kind and the quality of destiny that happens to you decisions not just the will of God the will of God for every believer is already clear in scripture Jeremiah 29 11 I know the thoughts that I think towards you say the Lord they are thoughts of peace are we together now yes and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end so we're not in doubt as to God's intent but as mighty as God is he's left the the power to choose that means I can, as an act of my will and volition, choose to live a useless life and God will respect my decision. At the expense of your eternal destiny, God still allows you to choose him or not, even though he's your creator. Can you imagine that? That at the expense of a man's eternal destiny, God will not put you under pressure to choose him by force. You can choose as an act of your will to say, Jesus, I understand you are Lord and Savior, but I reject you consciously and he will respect your decision. Decisions decide destiny. So you can find two people, say 25-year-olds, born the same day, perhaps by the same parents, and you will later call one Jacob and call another Esau what defined the disparity in their destinies and you would have several people of the same age range even mentored by the same person perhaps Jesus they become apostles of the Lamb with various kinds and qualities of destiny decisions and choices decide destiny now watch this to every decision you make there is a consequence connected to it by default. Please lend me your attention. Are we together now? You are not given the liberty to choose consequences. You can only make decisions. But with every decision, you must be willing. That means before you make any decision, you must be aware of the consequences connected to it. Let me repeat myself for your understanding that you are not given the liberty to choose consequences. So with every decision, right or wrong, good or bad, wise or unwise, there are consequences. Ladies and gentlemen, walk around the streets of South Africa and you will see many destinies today as a testament of the choices and the decisions they made. You will find others frustrated in their 50s and 60s, angry with themselves and others because of the choices that they made. Everybody was given the gift of a lifetime. Are we together? And yet you will see others vibrant, strong, powerful, very optimistic about life, still in the same South Africa. Some maximize their power to choose Others wasted it and allowed others to choose for them. Others were not even aware that they had been given such power. 
Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you, I can know your life and the quality of decisions you have made so far by looking at your life so far. Some of you enjoy the immunity of responsible parents and until you got to the age of discretion, they made certain decisions. Others are victims of the decisions of parents. Now you have to correct certain things that were wrong. Ensure that those who come out of you do not become a repetition of the carelessness that you are now suffering. Are we together? Now, time has a tripartite expression. There is past, present, future. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. In truth, there is nothing called tomorrow. Tomorrow is an idea that just plants hope in your life really ends in today. Because what you call tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> your today was yesterday's tomorrow. Am I right on that? Yeah. Everything that God wants to create an ordinance out of must have a trinity expression. Time is one of them. Past, present, future. Now, do you know why God fragmented time within those dimensions? Because you cannot do anything about yesterday. But the only way we correct yesterday is to take advantage of today and reprogram tomorrow with it. Are we together? Apostle, I came from a family of irresponsible parents, unfortunately. That is enshrined in yesterday. There's nothing you can do about it. Sadly, perhaps I was raped when I was a child. I sympathize with you, but that is yesterday. Regretting over yesterday is wasting today. making blind discussions about yesterday without a resolution to press forward I, you thought that time will halt because of your pain of yesterday time does not wait it keeps going while you waste today reminiscing on yesterday now I didn't tell you one thing that I need to tell you yesterday is very jealous yesterday has such a jealousy that it wants to reproduce itself in your today I need to inform you that yesterday carries such an, a jealousy that when it sees your today it feels jealous because you will now have to leave it behind and it, it has invented skills to find itself in your today again so you find out that this year becomes like last year. Next year becomes like this year. The jealousy of yesterday, insisting to want to reproduce the pain, insisting to want to reproduce the problem. Many wonder why they are today and their yesterday has no difference. You cannot see the demarcation. The jealousy of yesterday will require the wisdom of the word to draw a line and say, yesterday, I wave you goodbye. You have no place in my today. Listen, follow carefully. You invited me to speak to youth. The Bible says, remember ye not the former things. Is that in your Bible? Another word for former things is remember ye not yesterday. It does not mean forget it. It means ensure it has no power to influence your today. Then it says, neither consider the things of old, for behold, I do a new thing, it says, and it shall spring forth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But there are many of us here seated today. I want to dramatize. Am I wasting your time? All right. Let me have three fine gentlemen. Gentlemen, come and stand here, please. Thank you. Let's give them a big God bless you. Sir, this man, I like his beard. He's, he's going to be very... You stand right there. Pastor, please come. You stand right here. You, please stand here. All of you face this way. Everybody, watch this. Thank you. 
Thank you. Please stand here. Now, in my example, all of these are the same person, only in different time frames. Watch this now. I want the small you to discuss with the elderly you. I want to hear what the discussion will be. Am I? Now, the 15 year old you wants to have a conversation with the 70 year old you. It is still you. So, good evening, sir. And he replies, How are you, my son? Same person. How are you feeling now? My life is full of regret and pain, tears and sorrow. And then the young you asks, why? And he says, well, you are young. You have time. Time with a lot of ignorance and zeal. I am old. I have wisdom from my pain, but no time to correct it again. A conversation between the young you and the elderly you. And then the young you says, Sir, what happened? And he says, I once was you. And while I was you, I wasted my time not knowing that I would never be this version of me again. Now I have found myself in this state. My lifetime, morning wasted. Afternoon wasted. Evening wasted. And so, this is the young you. This is the elderly you. Crying in pain. And then the young you says, so what can we do about your situation now? And he says, unfortunately, my days are almost here. But here's what I want you to do for me. There are many who are joining this queue too. Go back and tell them that if you ever have the opportunity... Do not forget that one day this you must become this you. And that this you can never become this you. So one can become another, but the other cannot become this again. And he says, tell them, are we together now? To maximize their moments and I am where I am today not because time passed but because of the decisions and the choices I made as time passed. Another conversation, scene two. Are we still intelligent people? So another person now is discussing. Good evening, sir. And here is a vibrant elderly version of himself. How are you? Says, fine. You seem like an old man. Yes, I am an old man. Are you happy? Very happy. Why? Because when I was you, someone preached to me. When I was you, I listened to someone. When I was you, my colleague said, don't mind them. And I said, no, I will mind them. And now, I am healthy, strong, happy with children, grandchildren, Jesus, wealth, great destiny. What advice do you have for me? And the old you says, tell the ones who are like you to follow me. Now listen to me. In this place right now, whether you like it or not, there is a movie your life is acting at the end of your days, this conversation must happen between these two sets of people. The young you is evolving. Remember you celebrated your birthday last week. Let me tell you the meaning of that statement. X minus your age. Are we together? Thank you, gentlemen. Now be ready to write. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. 
come and do what you do set our hearts on you so you'll do what you do we need a move this is please sit down i want every you to get something to write now please write and if you don't feel like writing refer to my story again did you hear what I said? If you don't feel like writing, refer to my story. You will not forget this story. I assure you, there is a reason why I acted it. Because I acted you. And unfortunately, you are not given the liberty to choose whether you want to act it or not. You are currently in that story. Mm. I have found out in my life from scripture from the privilege of studying great people that there are a number of quality decisions. Now, our lives will be full of decisions that we have to make every day. But hear me, there are certain cardinal decisions that everybody here must make. These decisions directly affect the quality of your destiny. And I beseech you by the message of God. For many of you, this decision will be the cure to the pain you have seen as a result of the kinds of families you have come from. Everything that has caused you pain and hurt, here is a therapy from scripture for it. Apostle, I was born by a father I do not know perhaps, a mother I do not know. I sympathize with you, my dear one. But here is a decision I want to propose to you that if you do not make that decision, remember the jealousy of yesterday. It will reproduce itself. You have cried once. Don't cry again. Let me give you a few foundational decisions as my session with you here. And then once we're done, I'll get back to my seat. Are you ready to write? Promise me that you are going to take time to meditate upon this and you will walk upon those decisions. And I assure you, we'll see ourselves a few years to come and you will give me a serious hug with the kind of energy you used to run here and say, Apostle, thank you. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Decision number one. The first decision that any man and every man must make is the decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Please write it down. The first decision that every young person must make here is the decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Second Chronicles 25, 5. 26, 5. Second Chronicles 26, 5. Let's hurry up. I like you to read it please and he sought the Lord in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God and as long as he sought the Lord help me God made him to prosper as long as he sought the Lord, regardless the economy, as long as he sought the Lord, regardless the limitations around his life, provided he chose to serve the Lord, it pays to serve Jesus. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, do not allow our world today blackmail you emotionally into making you feel like a fool for loving Jesus. When you go through the pain that will be programmed in your future, if you don't take God seriously, those encouraging you today will not be there to take responsibility and say, I take responsibility for misleading you for 20 years. So don't mind them when they make you feel like Jesus is a burden to your growth. Hmm. The decision to love the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life as for me and my house is a choice apostle do you have options absolutely there are 4000 plus registered religions in the world 
and you had liberty to choose any one of them. But as for me, it's no longer because of my father or my mother. It's no longer because of the society I found myself in. I sat down, I thought, and my conclusion is that Jesus is worth my life. Is God speaking to someone here? You may be the first, even the only person to have made Jesus Lord of your life. But can I tell you, with Jesus you are more than a majority. You must summon the courage to remain strong. Now I admit that some of you have had to pay a dear price for standing alone for Jesus. I understand. Some of you have lost friends. Some of you have lost your sense of self-worth in fact. Because we live in a world that bullies you when you are a spiritual person. When you love the Lord with all your heart, especially as a young person, they look at you as a waste of energy and time and they hope that you will find meaning one day. Oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus, the maker of men, the lifter of men, are we together? The decision to know the Lord and to serve him all the days of your life. Do you have that down? Let me show you one more scripture very quickly. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. Very quickly. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. My goodness, God is helping someone here. 2 Chronicles 15, 12 to 15. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul. Next verse. That whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. That's how they were determined. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting, with trumpets and with cornets. Read verse 15 and all Judah rejoiced at the oath for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire and he was found of them as a result the Lord gave them rest round about yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir the Lord gave them rest round about because they covenanted to seek him. Number two, decision number two, foundational decision if you want a glorious destiny. Are you ready now? The decision to be transformed. Second to that decision to seek and serve the Lord is the decision to continue and for transformation to alter the way you think to alter the way you speak Isaiah 8 and verse 20 you are transformed when your thinking changes and when your speaking is altered to become pro kingdom pro scripture hallelujah go ahead and read this scripture Isaiah 8 20 ready one to read to the law and to the testimony it says if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them that means there is a way those who do not have light speak when you are a carrier of light it alters your mind and it alters your speech calling yourself a failure for instance is proof that there is no light in you. You must contend for superior transformation. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 and verse 7, Proverbs 23 and verse 7, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mine, he didn't say so he will become, he says so is he. You will be a merciless reflection of the summation of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Question, what do you believe about God? What do you believe about Satan? 
What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about failure? What do you believe about success? What do you believe about destiny? What do you believe about those around you? What do you believe about enemies? What do you believe about friends? What do you believe about poverty? What do you believe about prosperity? What do you believe about the word of God? This is a summation of your belief. And life will set an exam for you that you must write. You don't write it with your hand. You write it with your mind. There are many people who are saved, but they are not transformed. The inability to contend for superior beliefs. Now listen, transformation does not just mean that you become more Western. Sorry to use that expression. No, transformation means you become more proscriptive. You can adopt another ideology that is different from yours, but still the same thing in terms of their impotency to make you great. Are we together now? So when we talk about transformation, it means that you submit yourself to principles of scripture as the modus operandi that guides your life. If the Bible says, for instance, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right in your hostel, in your room, from your lowly estate, no comeliness to be desired, but you begin to speak every day. In the name of Jesus, I have a glorious future. A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. While you are doing that, allow the mockers to laugh. They are not mockers, they are witnesses. Tomorrow when you become great, they will say, we saw him. We saw him while he prayed every night. We saw her while she cried every night. While you returned from school and you were studying, they may be laughing now, but I assure you they are admiring you in secret. Lay your hands on your head and say, Father, say it again, Father, I contend for transformation. Can I tell you this? Listen, there are two ways, psychologically speaking, that men are programmed. One is genetically the other is environmentally. Genetic programming is why you look like your parents. Environmental programming is a summation of all the beliefs that you would have acquired from your environment. And for some of you, you came from environments where based on what you have received, there needs to be a, a divine surgery in your mind. It is out of the abundance of that mindset that hatred thrives, jealousy thrives, pain thrives. You are intelligent, but something about your growing up has made you believe you are a dummy. So even when you have the answer, fear still remains. There needs to be a transformation. Are we together? Change your clothes. But if your mind still remains the same, you only dress the old man. Watch this now. So, you have a gentleman. Come, please let me use you. Yes, you come. Come, I know you're doing your work. Watch this. Let's assume this gentleman just gets admission to study, say, architecture in a university here in South Africa. So, he's entering the campus as a naive young man intending to be an architect. You will never call him an architect just because he's holding an admission letter. That is not enough. He's admitted, but not yet qualified. You would think the presence of the admission letter should earn him the right to be called an architect. Not so. This gentleman from every lecture, and as he transits from the various stages, his body does not change, his voice does not change, his height does not change, his looks does not change, perhaps his dressing may not change. Six years later, you say, architect, so, 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 and so. My question is, what changed? So what did you educate since his, his, his body did not change? Who is the architect, the man or the mind? The body only carried the mind to the lecture hall and re engineer that mindset for six years and you call the mindset and confuse it with the body as an architect another example let's assume two people are standing here and god forbid 
but call this gentleman a responsible young man taking care of his family and then an other, another person a very irresponsible arm robber killing people watch this now you call this one an arm robber and you call this one a pastor am I right on that? you hate the arm robber remember and you love the pastor my question is let life be taken out of both of them and we have two dead bodies lying down do you call the dead body a pastor? do you call the other dead body an arm robber? so who was the arm robber really? and who was the pastor really? Because the same arm robber can come to house of treasures and sit somewhere and the moment the word of God comes, his body does not change, his voice does not change and he switches dimensions and after three years, the one's arm robber now becomes a pastor. The question is who was the arm robber and who was the pastor? Isn't it amazing? that we change every other thing except what really needs to be changed. We change our hair, voice, bodies, clothes. Help me. Except the real thing that needs to be changed. One more time, lay your hands on your precious head. Father, in the name of Jesus, every negative belief in my mind destroyed my destiny it must leave me now. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. Every negative thinking, suicidal thoughts, thoughts of failure, thoughts of defeat, thoughts of limitation. I make up my mind today. I will not embrace the negative traits that I saw in my father. I love him, but I will not reproduce his limitation. I love her, but I will not reproduce her limitation. Hallelujah. Please be seated. So that you walk out of this conference and say, Daddy, I love you. Mommy, I love you. My siblings, I love you. But I found a superior template for my life. I found a belief system that in hate I will not win. With jealousy I will not win. I have chosen. I'm using the power that God has given me. I came from a poor family. Let a poor family not come out of me. I came from a weak family. Let a weak family not come out of me. I came from an occultic family, you may say. Let an occultic family not come out of me. Sit down, please. Decision number three. Samaskela sofraski baha sebrandege balakusiata. Are you ready? The decision to discover and fulfill your God-given assignment. Write it. The third cardinal decision that every man must make. The decision to discover and fulfill your God-ordained assignment. Hmm. Colin. I just feel stirred in my heart to sing that your song for me. You know, you thought you would escape that song. You're still going to sing that song. I'm a Zulu. Give us a teaser and then the balance will come when I'm done with the remaining keys. Go ahead. Bye. Bye-bye. 
your team together and when I'm done I want us to blow off the roof in this place with that song hallelujah praise the name of the Lord John 4 34 please be seated decision number three is God changing someone here John chapter 4 and verse 34 Jesus said unto them who is speaking Jesus my meat he says the word meat there means my satisfaction and fulfillment is derived from doing the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Everyone here seated has a purpose and a destiny in Christ. God is not scratching his head wondering what your life should be about. No, you came as the conclusion of his script that has been written. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 7. Lo, I come, he says, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will. Everybody say, lo, I come. Shout it again. Say, lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will. My greatly revered mentor who went to be with the Lord many years ago, Dr. Miles Monroe, here's what he had to say changed my life by granting me a revelation of purpose and he said the wealthiest place is not the gold mines in South Africa and Congo DRC not the oil mines in Kuwait and the Middle East hallelujah he said the wealthiest place on earth is the cemetery where dreams never found expression books that should be written that were never written songs that would have healed nations were never 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 sung he called the cemetery the wealthiest place. And he made up his mind that he was going to die empty and not add to the wealth of the cemetery. And thankfully, he's written books today even though long gone. They are the kinds of people the Bible says, Abel, though dead, yet speaketh. These men cheated death by immortalizing their impact. Hallelujah. At the end of your life, I learned early in life, you will be remembered for the problems you solved or the ones you created. Did you hear what I said? At the end of your life, you will be remembered for the problems you solved or the ones you created. You are either a solution or the problem. You can't be neutral. It's your choice whether you have come as a solution or you have come to add to more problems. Every armed robber was born. Every pastor was born. Every wall changer was born. Every troublemaker causing mayhem in society was born. The difference is that others did not know that they were born to a great destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. You are in this place today because someone discovered purpose. You are seated here today as a testament of the profit that comes with discovering purpose. You have listened to men of God after men of God because someone found his place. Will you rob us of an opportunity to live a greater life by refusing to manifest what God has put within you? Lay your hands on your stomach. Say, Father, that which you have put within me, I must reveal for my world to see. Say it again. Say, Father. That which you have put within me, I must reveal for my world to see. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes 
are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.